Hey guys, well, another hot topic today. Um, I want to talk about the difference that I think um, between electric and gas and what I think about about both. Now, I, the last two videos that I've done stirred up a little bit of controversy with a couple local friends here and uh, one of them is really dogmatic about about gasoline. He loves gasoline engines. He's got everything gasoline. I mean, if his toothbrush could run on gasoline, he'd run it. <laughs> but because uh, he kind of, when I'm starting to do the solar, he's like, "Oh, that you'll never, you know, it's spouting off stuff. I can't understand what he's saying. It's just, uh, you know." But uh, I, I love solar. I've been playing with it for a little bit. Now I do have, I, I, as I promised, I do have my third video coming up about my workstation. Wow, the sun's really beating in here. Uh, my workstation that I'm putting in the garage. I just I had to buy the wire and run the wire through and get it into the garage from the solar panels. But that's coming up in another day, another day or two. So uh, stay tuned for that. But anyways, um, one of the reasons why I like solar, and I'm only doing this 45 watt solar that I have right now because I'm kind of getting my feet wet, kind of testing the waters because I plan to go with much bigger panels, much more power and whatnot to get me farther off the grid. Uh, and the farther off the grid I go, the happier I am. But uh, I don't know if I'll ever make it completely off the grid. Who knows? I, I may at some point. But right now, I'm just doing it just kind of for fun and to learn about it. But um, the, the reason why was because we had a major windstorm, and I, and I think I, I, I talked about this in my first video of solar. And uh, I, we were kind of cut off. We had, you know, where we live, power line went down one side, and a big tree went down on the other side, and we were kind of you know, it's going to get either way. And so, uh, but uh, also what happened was is that I, I kind of felt kind of confident because I had a gas. I have two gasoline generators, um, and so one of them is an 800 watt, and one of them is I can't remember what the size of it is, but it's a pretty good size one. But anyways, the big one decided to go belly up on me right when I needed it the most and I went to fire it up and it's only got that generator's only got like 60 hours on it so it's like like brand new uh, it's always just started with one pull I've never had a problem with it but I went to fire it up and it, it wouldn't even pull and so I opened up the uh, the oil plug and uh, gasoline started running out of the oil plug so I said oh no so we're looking at probably I don't know Probably a major carburetor rebuild. I think maybe maybe the float got stuck in the carburetor or something. So uh, when I shut it off the last time, it had run, run perfectly, and I shut it down. And then it was just a few months later I went to fire it up, and it did that. And so I don't feel confident. I, I've, I've had that problem before with gasoline engines. Um, we had a log splitter out here, and it was gasoline. And some friends came over were, were splitting some wood for me. And... Uh, that thing just decided to just not even start. Couldn't even figure out what it was, and uh, wasn't even getting any spark with the spark plug and whatnot. And so uh, I'm like, oh well, that's just great. So um, I, I've I've had some bad luck with gasoline engines, but anyways, I have a a, a pro and con list, and it's my age. I have to put it on paper because I can't remember it. But um, anyways, there there was a MythBusters show. I don't know if you guys saw that where they tested five electric electric engines or motors, I can't remember what it was. Uh, it, I think it were electric vehicles. And if you just Google it, Mythbusters electric vehicle, and uh, it'll come up and it'll take you out there, where those, those five electric ve vehicles just beat the gasoline hands down in like the most extreme conditions. And that was pretty amazing for me. I, I thought that was awesome. But um, I'm not talking about vehicles, by the way. I'm talking about everyday things that I use around here like lawn mowers and, and whatnot. But um, I've got a pro and con list. Now, having used both for quite some time, I, I, I think I can, I've got a handle on it. But if you guys have any pros or cons of either gasoline or electric, let me know and post it below because I'm going to put it out on my website. I'm going to have a list of the two, and I'm I I'm, I don't want to be dogmatic or, or zealous about it and and say you know oh you gasoline people you just you know I, I don't want to be that way I you know because I totally understand the people that like to use gasoline, uh, and so I'm just saying that for me my preference seems to be a, a you know battery operated electrical stuff, uh, but anyways let me let me give you the the lowdown on 
uh, on this. Now, like I say, it's not a comprehensive list, so if you want to add to it, just by all means, post something. Um, for one, okay, here's one thing. Gasoline does not store well. My son has, a, has an older, a, a classic car, and uh, he went off, and he was on the East Coast for a while, and it had been sitting for like a year, year and a half, and it, it, within that year and a half, it just it, it, it just gummed up. It just wasn't that long, and it's you know now you know you have to I don't know put some kind of gas you know extender or whatever in it next time we know. But but still, even that extending extender stuff, it just it doesn't. It's only going to last just so long. So you can't just let it, a gasoline engine just sit if you're not going to use it because gasoline doesn't store well. Uh, and number two, it's smelly. When you run it, when I used to have a gasoline lawnmower, it was smelly. It just smoked, and it just to me, and it was it was noisy. Uh, gasoline engines need constant maintenance. If you don't maintain your gasoline engines, they're gonna die on you. That's part of the whole sitting thing. I know that, but you know, there's you have to change the oil regularly. You have to uh, <laughs> stupid frogs. You have to, uh, yeah, change the oil regularly. You have to uh, make sure that you, um, you know, replace parts and lines and stuff as they get old and, and whatnot. So, because gasoline will break lines and stuff down. So, uh, there's that. Uh, gas is not a renewable resource. In other words, I just can't, I can't just sit here on my property when I run out of gas. Say, okay, well, I'll just go ahead and absorb some gasoline from the sun or, or, or dig in the ground and find some. I just, you can't do that. And what happened with us when... When, the, when we were down and out, with that windstorm, it's just, I couldn't go get gasoline. So I had plenty because my generator wouldn't run. <laughs> so I had plenty of extra gasoline. But, uh, th I mean, there's, there's this whole, where am I going to get gasoline if I run out? And there, I know there are a lot of people that have these prepper channels. And they're storing, like, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of gallons of gasoline, which, number one, that's dangerous. And number two, it only lasts just so long, so I am not storing any gas. The only gas I have is in my car. It's really what I have in my car. Uh, uh, yeah, gas can be difficult to get, like in disaster situations, like I was saying. So, um, and then another thing, too, is the oil dependency. We're, we're so dependent on oil, not just foreign oil, but domestic oil and, and refineries and, and whatnot. And another thing, too, is that gas is expensive. Look at how high gas is getting again. Now, it went down a little bit, but it's going right back up again. Now, I have a small lawn here. Um, well, I have a, a 5,000 square foot yard that it's not really a lawn. It's supposed to be a lawn, but it's mostly just crab grass and dandelions and whatnot. But I still have to whack it down. I, I mow it completely. And I've got a, a part over on the, the, the south side also that I mow. Now, with the gasoline, it takes about a half a tank to do this 5,000 square feet and the front lawn and so that's not too bad but I can do all of it with one full charge on my electric mower I have this uh, Remington battery here's the battery for it right here it's a, it's a pretty hefty battery but I've had that thing I've had this for oh goodness I want to say like eight years or seven this is the same battery uh, now I'm not saying that the battery still lasts as long but um, I, I use it from like April through October so what is that seven months and the battery still does this full uh, 5,000 square feet and the front lawn too on one full battery charge and so it's paid for itself already because if I mow it once a week and I have a half a tank it's a small tank in the gasoline one so it's just figure it's a I don't know. Just figure, you know, like a buck fifty, and so a buck fifty a week times 28, 28 weeks or whatever, and still you're looking at uh, what forty bucks or more than that. But forty bucks over what seven years is two hundred eighty or three hundred bucks or something. So this thing is paid for itself already, and it's still going strong. So, anyways, yeah, gas is expensive. Uh, now there is now there, I understand the whole. Like one, one of my buddies was saying, it says, try to drive a semi-truck with solar panels <laughs> and electric. Okay, he's got me there. He does have me there. I, I totally get that. So I'm not saying that gasoline doesn't have its place, because it does. I, 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 I can't even imagine. Maybe they make them, but I can't imagine running a semi-truck on electric or just batteries. 
it's I'm sure it's entirely possible but you'd have to haul in your whole 40 foot container you'd probably have to haul batteries just to <laughs> make the thing run I don't I don't know I, I'm not an expert on this and so I'm just this is only my opinion guys so I just wanted to just kind of throw that out there so yeah and and also you have a difficulty with electric trying to uh, run if the power goes the grid goes down trying to run things like a refrigerator and washer and dryer that's a huge challenge and so that that takes big solar big solar arrays to be able to get that kind of power to be able to run that so if you have a gasoline generator of course you fire it up you can plug in your refrigerator your washer and dryer and things like that so I get that I, I get that part of the argument that's where I, that's where gasoline really comes in handy so um, but that's hopefully I'm going to be challenged I'm going to be I'm going to be t taking that to task. I'm going to be solving that problem here within the next few years, I think. So let me give you the electric pros. Okay, electric, zero emissions. When I, when I run my, my mower, there are zero emissions. It's, and it's quiet. Uh, when I take my hand off the thing, it just dies. And when I go back and I pull the handle down, it starts going again. And, I mean, I can hear people talking to me. Uh, it's not dangerous. If I have to stop and grab a, grab a stick, I just let go. It turns off. I go over that and I pull the handle back. So, anyways, cheaper. Definitely cheaper. Uh, like I did, like I said before, you amortize it out and it's, it's much cheaper. Uh, in a survival situation or in a, where the grid goes down or have a disaster, I can charge this up with my solar panels. Uh, not my 45 watt, by the way, <laughs> but when I get the bigger panels that'll be able to charge this up, no problem. Run an inverter to it with the charger that comes with this, 110 volt charger with an inverter, no problem. I can, I can charge that up in a day and I'll be mowing my lawn. Of course, in a survival situation, I'm not really concerned about mowing my lawn. But um, anyways, all those things about electric that, that just, you know, that I think are, are, are the pros outweigh the cons. Uh, for like I said, the cons. Now the cons of electric is that you're not going to be able to run huge equipment without lots of solar, lots of electrical uh, panels and stuff like that. So, but anyways, um, I know this is going to stir up a lot of controversy, but I am actually starting to replace all of my gasoline stuff. No, not starting. I have replaced. I've, I've replaced all of my gasoline engines, with one exception. Well, of course, my car. But uh, the one exception is, is my wood chipper, and I don't think that they make a battery-powered wood chipper. It would take huge batteries, and so that's another thing that would be very difficult to be able to run. But anyways, I have things like my drills. All my drills are cordless. My saws, I have, uh, you know, uh, skill saw and things like that. Uh, skill saw is actually a brand, but anyways, uh, circular saw, that's the name of it. Uh, my weed whacker is now battery operated. I have a Ryobi. I really love that thing. That battery seems to last forever. I can weed whack my whole property. Frogs, helicopter. I never get helicopters here. <laughs> uh, weed whacker, lawnmower. My lawnmower is replaced. Uh, my log, log splitter. After that log splitter that they had out here, I went out and I bought an electric log splitter. And believe it or not, that log splitter, uh, it's really small. It's only about this big. And it will split pieces of madrone, green madrone, about that big around. I mean, that thing just, of course, it'll, you have to take it in, in sections because the, 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 the bed on it, you just can't put huge stuff on it. But I, I can split things this big around, lay it on there, and just, it'll chomp them right away. And I love that. And a lot of people, it's funny because... People that have come over before say that's not going to split anything. That those electric motors, I'll tell you what, they are efficient and they are powerful. And um, don't ask me what phase it is and all that. I know it's 110. That's all I know about electric. <laughs> but it's 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 incredible. I love that log splitter. And there has not been a log yet that I haven't been able to split. So, and I've got some big dug fur and whatnot that I put on that thing. So, uh, I have my log splitter, my 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 other things, my my weed whacker, my lawnmower, and so um, I am thoroughly happy. And when I get the new panels put up, I plan on, uh, after this test run, I plan on putting, I want to fill my garage completely with solar panels. And uh, I'm, I'm probably looking, I don't know how many panels I'm going to put up there, but I'd like to have like 3,000, I don't know, 3,000 watts or at least. I'm, I'm going to have to do a, a, a layout all my, my energy uh, consumption and then go from there. 
And but that's that's a that's a later date. But anyways, yeah, I thought I would I would just kind of throw this out here because I know that's going to be a lot of people are just going to think I'm wacko. But uh, yeah, I'm replacing all my gasoline engines, and I would like to hear your guys' opinion because uh, maybe there's something that I'm missing that I'm not that I'm not getting. But if, if, if there is something, post it down below. I'd like to hear your comments and I'd like to hear your suggestions because I. I'm, a lot of times I'll just kind of spout off and I don't look at the whole picture and then somebody will say, I'll go, oh, you know, I didn't even think about that. And so uh, maybe I'm missing a few things like that and I'd just love to hear you guys' opinion. But anyways, for what it's worth, uh, that's my opinion. Electric and solar totally win in my, in my opinion. All right, guys, well, thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to subscribe and we'll catch you guys later.